So uh, I like playing around with things. Actually, there's this dice game that friends play called Liar's Dice, and I really hate it because it's based on like random chance and f fooling other people. So when my friends are playing with that, what I started doing is I started drawing pictures of dice. Uh, because there's actually some nice, beautiful symmetry there. Like, I mean, there's one, and that's okay. One is different, but then there's two, and so if you want to have three, you can merge one and two, and you get three. And then uh, you can have, if you take a two and you rotate it, you get a four, and then, you know, five is a merging of, of those three images, and then you get the six, and six is kind of boring, but still, these are the standard symbols on a six-sided dice, so they're kind of fun to play with. Well, what can you do with that? Unicode is awesome, by the way, because I didn't have to render those in this case, although I did before. I just used the Unicode symbols for them. But anyway, uh, what about expressing numbers with these? Wouldn't it be cool to have a clock that just shows the time in dice? But how could you do that? You need to be able to represent the numbers using dice. Well, the naive way of doing that is you could just count them. So you could have 7 is a 1 and a 6, and then 8 is a 2 and a 6, except also you could do it with a 4 and a four. Actually, how many ways are there of representing all of the numbers using dice, using addition? That's actually a fun thing to find out. You're not going to find out here. Um, so there's another way of expressing this. So I don't really like this way, because if you wanted to display the time, uh, it would be quite ugly. So if you want to say the time of 2348, it would look something like this. Can you, can you tell what that is? Actually, that's not uh, 2348, that's 2347. 2348 would be all sixes because 48 is divisible by six. So obviously that would make a really poor desktop clock. I actually built one that displays it that way, but it's almost impossible to read. So there has to be a better way of doing this. All right, so what's a better way of doing it? Oh, by the way, uh, if anyone spotted the error before I mentioned it, although I'm really fast, uh, let me know. OK, so a better representation would be to show all of the numbers and have them represent what they represent uh, wholly. So what you could do is you could use base 5, but then you have to take 6 and say 6 is 0, or maybe 1 is 0, but then that doesn't, that doesn't, that's ugly. But that's how you could do it in base 5. With 6 symbols, you can represent base and minus 1. But there's another way of representing numbers that we're going to, and I'm going to show you. And I'm not going to give it a name because I want you to find out about it. But so if you represent numbers in this way, you can represent six with a six, you can represent seven with a one in the sixes column, which is six to the first power. And then, so there you go, with one and one, you can represent seven. Um, and six obviously represents itself. So 42 is uh, six and a six, which is six sixes and then six which adds up. You have your 36 place, so you can have three 36s and five sixes and six ones, and that's 444, or as I call it, a dice gross. So, um, although I also like the symmetry of 44 there. So uh, if you do this a lot, what you end up seeing is there's a whole bunch of, of dice, and uh, generating this was kind of interesting. I started seeing patterns in this, and one of the patterns I wanted to know about is what about prime numbers? So every place where you see an asterisk here is a prime number. Uh, seven is uh, there, and then there's, there's that. I notice, oh, those are both the repeating digits are prime. What does that mean? Uh, so what's the next w biggest prime number that happens to be all ones? And the next biggest prime number that happens to be all ones is uh, 55,987, and it's that many. There's something interesting there. The length of that is seven. Whoa, this is really interesting. Does this mean anything? Well, uh, the length of two, uh, the length of, of seven, which is two, is two. So maybe uh, what else? Well, forty-three. Okay. So what's the next biggest one? The next biggest one is that number, which I'm not going to read, which has a length of twenty-nine. And uh, what you are challenged to do now is write a program to find the next largest one. And there's actually a couple of takeaways. So figure out the permutations if you would like. This is a fun game. These are things you can use to play with Perl six, perhaps, or Perl five. Um, you can also f uh, figure out what the repeating thing is called. If you want to know if your answer is correct, you can ask me because I've done the research on this. It was my playing around with numbers on one board. And uh, that's a very deep rabbit hole that you can fall down on uh, OEIS uh, for finding the things about this and other recreational math bits. That's it. Perfect. Thank you.